It's the Eagle Community Television Forum with your host, Gary Shorman. You're watching Eagle Community Television. This is the Forum, and I'm Mike Kerner. We're recording the show at the Dillon's location. So if you have a chance, come on out to our Eagle Dillon's location. Our uh, show, our guest host today is author Roger Fry. Roger, thanks for coming by and visiting us here. Thank you for inviting me today. Well, it's been, uh, it's going to be a, quite a pleasure. I want to let everybody know the show being brought to you by HMC. Now, Roger, uh, you're an author. You've got a book that you've written. Yeah, there it is. Yes, it's called The Chronicles of John Grant, and this is Volume One, Tip of the Spear. When there, you say volume one, that means there, there are more There are to come. more coming, yes. We're, we're uh, in the process of, of developing two more books, and uh, they will be uh, on sale probably by this time next year. We'll have volume two out. But we're, we're looking to see how this one's going to go and uh, take it from there. Very but good. Well, what we'll do is we'll talk more about the book and how you started out on that, but you know, you've got an interesting life, too. You, you, you graduated from Fort Hay State University, but you've kind of traveled and lived around all over the country, haven't you? Yes, I have. I grew up in Anchorage, Alaska. I spent 35 years there. Uh, a lot of what I did there was, uh, was blue-collar work. I was, I was raised in a uh, family of journeyman iron workers, so I got my iron working uh, certificate, and I was doing fencing and all that kind of things. And uh, the problem with iron working in Alaska is it's seasonal. <laughs> so by the time November shows up, there's no more work. <laughs> so you got to find something else to do for five months until it, it gets warm enough that you can go back outside and work again. But uh, I did auto mechanics. Um, uh, I uh, was the, was the uh, general uh, um, person in, in charge of uh, building tent camps for the, for the oil company. Uh, a friend of mine came to me and said, hey, we need some tent camps up there. Can you do it? And being an iron worker, I said, okay, what do we need? He says, well, we need, some, we need some big buildings that are made out of steel frames, and we can cover them with fabric, and we can take them out there and put them up for the oil company. I said, hey, it sounds fantastic. <laughs> so we did that for a couple of years, and I got injured. And my whole business just went downhill, and, and I had to, had to get out of that. But I spent a lot of time after that trying to build myself back up to find out what I could do, because because by by that time um, my back was just completely gone. I was an alcoholic at the time. Mm. I started in recovery in 1986. I've been sober ever since. It's almost 30 years of continuous sobriety. I've uh, I have worked in all kinds of different fields of blue collar, um, plumbing, electrical, mechanics, a lot of different things. Um, I bet my dad was a carpenter, so I learned how to do carpentry and, and all of that sort of thing. So I'm pretty well rounded in the trades. But there was something always missing. My back was screwed up and I couldn't work and I didn't know what to do. And I started looking for solutions. And, and I found that uh, there were some things that I wanted to, to do, like uh, build my back back up, you know, try and find some healing because the doctors wouldn't, wouldn't give me anything. They were saying, well, you know, we could operate on you, but it ain't going to help. I said, well, what else can I do? And I found out that, that there are nutritional things out there that I could do to start building myself. And, and I, I ran across this guy named Arnold Errett. He's a professor out of, the, out of the, uh, the last century, 100 years ago. And he was saying, clean your diet up and it'll heal. So I go, wow. So I said, okay, I'd like to start writing on this, but without letters behind your name, Nobody takes you seriously. So I went back to school. Actually, I went to school because I'd never really been to school. But I didn't know if I could do it because my back was so bad I could hardly function. And sitting in a chair in a, in a school setting for any time, length of time at all, 45 minutes is about the average time for, for a session in school for a class. And there were times when I was real hard pressed to make that 45 minutes. But I stuck with it. I found out I was good at it. And I started writing, and, and I found out that I was pretty good at that, too. So, so your, your undergraduate, is that from, uh, where did you get your undergraduate? I, I, got my, I got my undergraduate from the University of Colorado at Denver. Okay. Uh, I, I, uh, I went to uh, Barton County Community College and got my associate's degree in communication. And stayed there an extra, an extra season to get uh, another associate's degree in counseling. Because being a recovered alcoholic, Building up some years, you know, I've, I've, I've counseled alcoholics for years, you know, hundreds and hundreds of alcoholics. So I got this kind of rapport 
with the counseling thing, everybody says, you got to go, you know, you need to go do some counseling. I'll go, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, on, uh, you know, as, a, as, a, uh, as an avocation. But when they pay you to do it, it gets really tough. And you've probably heard some interesting stories out there. And I mean, you have a very interesting story, too, of how you grew up and, and, and what you've done uh, with your time in Alaska. But you've probably heard a lot of great stories, too. Yes, I have. <laughs> and I've written another book uh, around that called Confessions of a Real Alcoholic. And what I did was basically I sat in AA meetings listening to people's stories. And when I heard an interesting story that I thought would, 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 would connect, I would write a a one-liner, you know you're a real alcoholic when, and then well, you know you're a real alcoholic when you've got to dodge every tree in the road to get home. Mm. You know you're a real alcoholic when, uh, there's hundreds of examples. So you're working on that on another, another time yeah, and Yeah, and, I've, and, and it's, it's, it's finished, but I'm not, I'm not using them as, as, a, uh, as, a publisher. as a publisher just yet. I, I mean, that's self-published. And I hope to develop a whole series of, of, of these, of these uh, things that, are, that are, are help aids for alcoholics. Because, well, because my main interest you know, in, in a, a lot of things that, are, that I've been doing lately and up until now, my interest is helping other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. That's what we do. When we get a certain amount of sobriety and learn how to do it, you know, then we go out and find somebody else who wants to do it and show them how. So this is, this is a tool for people who, uh, who have been through three treatment centers and four DWIs and still don't know if they're an alcoholic or not. I can show them, I can show them this, little, this little example and say, here's 300 examples of self-professed alcoholics and their behavior. See if any of this fits for you. And so that worked out for you. You got that book done. And, uh, yeah, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and, and so it's an important tool because Alcoholism is such a terrible disease and it muddles the mind so drastically that people can't not make those discernments for themselves. I have yet to meet an alcoholic who is still drinking who, who will actually admit that alcohol is a problem in their life, even in they're on their deathbed. Well, you've got that book that's waiting. We've got this book over here. What I probably wanted to do is next ask you about uh, Fort A. State University. You yes. graduated from Fort A. State University. Is that where you, you received your master's? That's where I, I received my master's degree, yes. And what were you and, going to Fort Hayes for? Because um, you, know, you, you, you think, oh, an author. They have probably are in the English department or something like that. Well, see, I wanted to, I wanted to get a, a well-rounded education in how people communicate with each other and why. Uh, when, I was in, when I was in Colorado, I got a minor in psychology because I wanted to not only be able to communicate more effectively, but understand the mechanisms involved in communication and find out how absolutely complicated communication is. It, I mean, nobody, I mean, nobody ever masters language because there's always something else. And then the psychology behind that, you never really know when you're talking to somebody what they're thinking. I'm looking at you, I'm going, God, he's thinking I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, I'm thinking that, but, you know, in, in today's society, we have another barricade uh, or, or obstacle in our way, too. And that's uh, not only we have to worry about other people, we have to worry about computers, too, and how we can get over those obstacles of, right. of communicating through computers. Yeah. Because there, it, it's different when you, when you type something in a text as opposed to maybe the emotion in, in what we speak. Right, and we've got this huge information overload where the media just bombards us with so much stuff that we can't, you know, it's hard to stop the flow and say, hey, look, look at this critically. Because by the time you stop it, there's 10 other things on top of it. And you're right, the, the communication these days is, is very shallow because our, our students are not taught to think critically about the subjects that they're looking at. They got so many things to look at that they just can't, can't discern one from the other and, and a lot of their ideas and, and values are given to them through a mass media that is so overwhelmingly present that it's, it's hard to, to make sense of one thing or another because if you look at one thing you're missing 20 more. Mm -hmm. So you're living out here in Kansas now, and you uh, graduated from Fort A. State University, your degree in communications, and then you're sitting around and you're thinking, I need to write a book. 
how did that whole thing come about? Or actually, you know what we'll do? We'll talk about how that whole book came about. We'll talk about your book and uh, the main character and how you came up with all that. We'll talk about that in the second half of the show. How about that? That sounds great. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. Again, this is The Forum. I'm Mike Kerner in for Gary Shorman. It's brought to you by HMC. We'll be back in just a minute. Youthful body, tight tummy, smooth facial lines. Greystone Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery is here to help you achieve your goals and give yourself the new look you've always wanted. Greystone offers sophisticated surgical and non-surgical cosmetic procedures. With services now available locally, there's no need to wait any longer. Contact Greystone Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery at Hayes Medical Center today or online at greystonecosmetic.hayesmed.com. It's a beautiful day in our super high-speed internet great customer service neighborhood. Like you, this is where we live. In fact, our company is employee-owned, so it's our goal to improve the quality of life for everyone in our community by delivering faster, more reliable internet, clearer, more feature-laden phone service, and tons of high-definition TV channels, all with a level of customer service and value you'd expect from people who are your neighbors. Eagle Communications, our community connected. You're watching The Forum. I'm Mike Kerner in for Gary Shorman, brought to you by HMC. You can look us up on Facebook, The Forum. Also, you, if you have any show ideas, Gary would love to hear from you. Gary.Shorman at Eaglecom.net. That's Gary.Shorman at Eaglecom.net, right here on the screen. Um, with us today is Roger Fry. He's an author, The Chronicles of John Grant. And we'll talk to you a little bit about that, writing the book. You know, in the first half of the show, we learned a little bit about you and, and your background and, and how that kind of helped you with the book. How did this book come about? Well, I'm a, I'm a, a history student. I love to listen to, to, to history and, and how things come about and current events and why things happen the way they do and what's going on. You know, and you know, it's the, the inhumanity to man that has gone on forever is just, it baffles me. I don't understand how seemingly intelligent, well-read, or, or uh, uh, reasonable people can go out and kill each other for the sake of their color of their skin or, the, or their religion or, or, or just because they live, you know, over there or if they like KU instead of, of K-State. I mean, there's, what's going on? Why are we so divided? So then this book idea and then, came and out this, of that? And this book talks about a lot of of what's going on behind the scenes. There are, there are forces at work in our society that we don't really see. We've got the visual stuff, we've got the surface of what goes on on the daily basis, and then underneath that there is a ocean of things that are going on that we don't see that influence us from day to day. Well, with this book here, The Chronicles of John Grant, who is the character John Grant and how'd you come up with the name? Okay, I, I looked around for a name and John Grant is, it evolved into, he's the great grandson of Ulysses S. Grant. And he comes from a military family. And he's a U.S. Navy f fighter pilot who grows up, you know, with a, with a Marine father who, who teaches him the classics. And his, his mother was a teacher, and they, they, they homeschool him, and they teach him all of the good things that, that, that you don't get in public school. And they, and they raise him up to be something very special. And his father starts him out in martial arts from the time he's three years old and builds him up and takes him to the places that he to get what he needs as far as mastering his, his martial arts skills. At the same time, his mother is giving him a first class education. So by the time he gets to Annapolis, he is very well educated and, 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 and skilled in many, many different things. And it, and, it, and it builds from there. What really starts the book off and my main theme is that his wife and child get kidnapped in front of his face. And it throws him into a world, the underworld, that, that, that is revealed to him that there's a lot more going on than we can see. And it's very pervasive and it's, and it's very intelligent and, it, and he's got to develop his skills to the ultimate degree, not only to save his family, but ultimately to save the world. Because is, is this a book? Is this book for in current time, or is it supposed yes. to be futuristic? Yeah, the book is in current time, and it, it's all about overcoming obstacles, not only the ones that we face, but the ones that are inside of us to slay the demons. the 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 main The main opposition in the book is a is a race of demon 
uh, reptiles that have that have ruled the world since the beginning of time, basically. And the overlords are always in the shadows, and they have their minions who who who, who, uh, who operate through. It almost sounds like a sci-fi book, or or, yeah. or even maybe a movie script. Exactly. Yes, very much so. Everybody that reads it goes, "When's the movie coming out?" <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking, I'm working on that. I, you know, I'm. I'm we let's do one thing at a time. Let's get, let's get this out there and get and get it popularized. It's it, it you know it looks like a fair sized book. How long does something like this take you? I'm sure there's a lot of pre planning involved and then also uh, setting it up and writing it because you probably you don't you probably know what your beginning is going to be, some of the middle and some of the end. Then you've got to right. kind of fill in the blanks. Right. I, I when I started it, I had a, I had a good idea about a character that is larger than life. You know the ideal. And he, and, and he is the ideal that we strive for. He's the one who, who develops his emotional content to the point where he can, he can address all of these things to, and, and bring his whole being together to combat these, these uh, incredibly tough and strong and smart reptiles. And the whole book is all about his development. And in it, he goes through, you know, here we are, in the back of his mind all the time, his, his wife and, and his daughter are, are kidnapped and they're thrown into the, the kidnapping rings. And the, even though they, they're keeping track of him and they know where, he, where they're at, his main job now is to become what they call the tip of the spear, to spearhead the whole world into, into overcoming and, and overthrowing the overlords. So this is, as you say, John Grant, Volume 1. So how many volumes in the series do you think you're going to go? I've got, uh, I've got two more set up, and it's going to, it, and it's going to expand from where it's at. But, but he is, he is uh, the one person that can overcome all of the obstacles and to, and to guide the world. Uh, I call them the forces of light. We've got the forces of darkness and forces of light. It's, it's, a, it's a very classic, you know, uh, evil versus good thing to where the, the, the good has been waiting for somebody to come along to guide them into, into to overcoming what they cannot by themselves. Well, I don't want to ruin the ending on it and, and, and tell everybody how it ends, but um, uh, I guess if they want to know, they can buy the book. How, how would right. they go about buying the book? Well, I've got a, uh, a book signing event at Mocha's here in Hayes on Saturday between 1 and 3 on the 18th. Okay. And uh, it's already up on Amazon, and all of the, uh, all the regular outlets uh, are going to be carrying it. So it's, it's out there now. And, and the second one will be released when? Uh, Probably about this time next year. Okay. It takes it takes a little while to, to go through the process. And you you've got a publisher and everything. Yes. On yes. This is Tate Publishing uh, out of Oklahoma. Uh, and so you have got a great book. We want people to come out and see you and uh, see the book and get a chance to buy it. It's called The Chronicles of John Grant, Volume One, Tip of the Spear by Roger Fry. Yeah. Boy, thanks for coming by. It sounds exciting. You sounds bet. Like and show up. Yeah, show up at Mocha Saturday between 1 and 3. I'll sign it. I'll autograph it for you. They're only 15 bucks. Sounds like you got a lot on your plate. I do. Well, thank you very much for coming by and visiting with us. Again, it's John Grant, author, not John Grant, Roger. Roger. Yeah, I was thinking of the character. We're getting that a lot <laughs> I'm, now. I'm, I'm, I'm crossing it over. Yes. Roger Fry, author of the book. The Chronicles of John Grant. I want to thank him for coming by today. I'm Mike Kerner in for Gary Shorman. This is The Forum brought to you by HMC. Thanks for being a part of the show today. Youthful body, tight tummy, smooth facial lines. Greystone Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery is here to help you achieve your goals and give yourself the new look you've always wanted. Greystone offers sophisticated surgical and non-surgical cosmetic procedures. With services now available locally, there's no need to wait any longer. Contact Greystone Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery at Hayes Medical Center today or online at greystonecosmetic.hayesmed.com.